at 7-Eleven. Below freezing predicted, Slurpee takes the simmer out of summer. Curious, bold, rare sensation. It'll freeze your pipes. Engineers at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant have been struggling to stop contaminated water from leaking into the ocean. They have a new plan for a wall in a tunnel underneath the complex to try to stop the radioactive flow. Highly contaminated water is flowing into a maze of underground utility tunnels. Engineers suspect that water is mixing with groundwater and leaking into the ocean. You, you ever sit around and say, I cannot believe what my mouth just said? Yeah, because I, I just wondered if, if after you have said that, you thought, wow. It's really hard to take back stupid. In April, workers with the Tokyo Electric Power Company started to create a wall of ice between the basement of the number two reactor building and the tunnel. They installed pipes to carry coolants. But by July, the water had yet to freeze. So workers added more than 400 tons of ice and dry ice. They say this helped freeze over 90% of the tunnel cross section. They report obstacles prevented them from installing coolant pipes everywhere. TEPCO officials say they want to fill gaps in the ice with materials such as cement. And now at 7-Eleven, you can get a Slurpee in a surprise cup. 24 ounces of your favorite Slurpee flavor. And there's a surprise on the bottom of the cup. You get a different surprise with every Slurpee surprise cup at 7-Eleven. Nuclear regulators say they'll decide whether to approve the plan. First, they want to assess the effectiveness of using filler material in tests conducted by TEPCO. A separate project is now underway at the plant to freeze soil and create a wall of ice around the four reactor buildings. It is aimed at blocking groundwater from flowing into damaged reactor buildings and becoming tainted. But a delay in efforts to build the wall in the tunnels could hold up that project as well. That's because the ice wall and the tunnels will intersect at some points. 7-Eleven. Below freezing predicted. Slurpee takes the simmer out of summer. Curious, bold, rare sensation. It'll freeze your pipes. Ah! <laughs> Brain freeze. I know this is going to be a disappointment. I'm not going to talk about the drone strike that killed four penguins. These were pretty evil. They had to do it because they were hanging out with Al Qaeda, see? But we're going to talk about Fukushima tonight. Yeah. Hey, you get out there. You say it like a banana. Like walking in sunshine. Uh, getting on the plane, yeah. I find someone to job you not do, yeah. 26, 27, 28, 29. Hey, stop your crying. 47, 48, 49, 50. Okay. Get another Fukushima 50 ready. And we'll go get these bodies in about 10 minutes. Now, you guys have been selected to go in to number three. And it's just like a banana and a potato chip and walking in the sunshine. And so you down in the corner, stop crying. Now, I know this might seem a little scary, but all you gotta do is follow the guy in front of you and pick up the fuel rod. Right, pick up that fuel rod. You'll run outdoors. You'll make that sacrifice, or we tell your friends about Pokemon Go. These buildings absolutely, positively did not explode. There was no release. I repeat, there's no release. The buildings are not damaged. You can go back to sleep. There is absolutely, positively, beyond any shadow of a doubt, no damage to this building. This building is perfectly intact. The containment, the fuel pools above me are still there. I don't understand why everybody's making a big fuss about this. The building is fine, I'm telling you. Tepco love you a long time. Tepco your friend. You got Facebook, yeah. You tell Facebook. Tepco your friend, yeah. You friend to think about. Oh, you friend Tepco. You friend Tepco on Facebook, yeah. You don't like Tepco. Huh? What? Why? Tepco love you a long time. Tepco your friend. I call police on you. You don't speak out against Tepco. I have you trying to prison. Who? 
You scared now, yeah? Yeah, hi, Wolf. Well, I'm at the TEPCO nuclear site, and these men behind me said they were asked last night to friend TEPCO on Facebook, and when they said no, they were jacked in a carjacking, and they woke up here this morning at this place here, and they said they dressed them up in this stuff and told them to come here, and that a tattoo guy was going to meet them. To, to push the burning fuel through uh, into the back of the reactor. But the heat had melted the cartridges, so they'd become stuck inside the core. They were forced to use scaffolding poles they'd found nearby to try and push the cartridges out. Radiation was so intense they could only work a few hours. They were running out of firefighters. The police uh, from the factory had turned up looking for volunteers. Uh, and they brought a bus and they decided the best way to get the volunteers was to go to the cinema and, uh, and volunteer the back two rows uh, at, the, uh, at the show to go into the factory to, uh, as it turned out, to uh, help push the fuel rods out of the, uh, out of the reactor. We got giant breaking news, gargantuous breaking news, and I'll explain why it's so big. Number four had an explosion last night, caught on fire. So last night in Japan was 8.35 p.m. Now, why is this such a big deal? This is such a big deal as I've called the Fuktonium, and you can laugh all you want about Fuktonium. And if you think I'm crazy, then you call Einstein crazy. You call Oppenheimer crazy. They, Plutonium is a byproduct, America. Cesium-134, Thysium-137, Stonium-90, you know, dig in. you got to understand. Plutonium is man-made. I call it Plutonium. You don't think the nuclear fission going on in these reactors spent fuel all over the pools for 1,160-some-odd days. There's not a byproduct. They called it atmospheric fission. I call it Plutonium. This is a big, big one of the most dangerous nuclear reactor sites in the world may well be on fire right now. Um, this is a video by Missing Sky, who um, in a usual brilliance called it, um, as did many of us watching this all unfold. This is incredible news. This is absolutely terrifying. Looking at is a nighttime video. What you're looking at is a webcam from last night. And the credibility David Suzuki. That the I have seen a paper which says that if in fact the fourth plant goes under an earthquake and those rods are exposed, it's bye bye Japan. And everybody on the west coast of North America should evacuate. Now, if that isn't terrifying, I don't know what is. And so those words now carry weight. you got to remember that Unit 4, you're looking at it right now. I'm going to show you the video, a clip from last night's video. And you probably can't see it very well. We'll make it a little bit bigger. Now, you can see the plume coming across. And you can see the red in the middle. See that? Now you think about how big the site is. The smoke is coming right at the camera. So it's pretty obvious from this picture, this video you're watching, that the entire site now has to be evacuated and that it's contaminated. And this is Unit 4. Ad, uh, Kevin Blanche is adamant about that. This is an important what we're looking at here because of what Suzuki says stands true. This plume at 100 miles an hour in the jet streams uh, was 2,400 miles. Two and a half days it's in North America. We'll just let that fin peter out a little bit. That's what we believe is Unit 4. It's Fukushima nuclear power plant with a vicious, massive flames shooting uh, hundreds and hundreds of feet across. We have smoke enveloping it. And now, the smoke blew past it. We don't know which... So that's unit one. Now, over to unit, unit one lost its top. It's 100% meltdown. Fuel pools are missing on the top and it's in dire strait. Nobody can get in the building. 
over a million sievers outside of that place. There's rods everywhere. 500 sievers will kill you. It'll kill you. You walk past that. Two weeks later, you're just a big, dead lump of flesh. No word. Now, this is Unit 3 you're looking at. That's a 100% meltdown. That was Mox Fuel. Now, obviously, that building is in a lot of trouble. Right? That's a lot of trouble. You agree? Now, just for context, Unit 4 is the one in the bottom left-hand corner. So, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Excuse me. Now, they all had detonations, every one of them. They all had detonations. And uh, Unit 4 was on fire several times. Unit 3, excuse me. Do you think Unit 3 had a nuclear explosion? We're not going to ninny over that stuff because it blew pieces of the rods up to a couple of miles away. But once again, this is only based upon a short release from a single reactor at Fukushima. And as I just showed you, all the reactors, now the first 100 hours that uh, was 120 billion becquerels just out of that one reactor, see? That's the importance of it. To flood the primary um, containment. On Monday at 11 a.m., so this is now uh, in, on the third day, um, there was a hydrogen day was that the reactor four building reactor four is adjacent to reactor three uh, was observed to be a, a, a flame and um, so this was sort of at the same time that radiation levels were increasing further there was a lot of suspicion that this fire was in the spent fuel pool um, however since that time tepco has said that there was an oil leak in a water pump and that that was what was was the cause of the fire uh, at reactor building um, four. By the way, these fuel pools are 30 uh, feet deep. Um, they're in the reactor buildings, um, but they're outside the containment. Um, it's okay for their water to boil, uh, but the elements must remain covered. Uh, if they uncover, they're likely to overheat. Um, TEPCO says that the fire, or said on one occasion that the fire was extinguished at noon, so that's not very long after. Um, IAEA says that they were informed that the fire was um, extinguished at five o'clock in the afternoon. So that's really um, where things stand, and I'm going to leave it to them. So unit four, that's the one you see straight ahead here. Now, that detonated, you just heard MIT talking about how it detonated and on fire and everything else. I want you to listen to CBS, Seth Dorn. He claims he's inside the same building that you're looking at right now. The heart of the decommissioning work taking place here in Reactor 4. Now, you can't get less than a check x-ray, okay? Because uh, you're ingesting radioactive particles. You get an x-ray every second of your life. Now, what he sh what you're looking at right now, he claims that's inside of there, that those fuel pools are the same. Somehow, that fuel pool and this fuel pool can magically exist inside of this or per se uh, inside of that now you won't see any scaffolding you're not going to see anybody with cutting torches you're just going to see Seth with these magic pictures and a roof that looks like Molly Maid put it in there and you can't get inside of these buildings and that's unit 4 they're claiming and they're also claiming that's unit 4 and if you go down below my video you will find uh, 2,000 pictures at TEPCO's website and this will be one of them so what's going on here they, they came out in the last couple of months CBS CBC ABC BBC everybody and claimed that unit 4 was pretty was gorgeous but in reality is extremely destroyed and unstable below freezing predicted Slurpee takes the simmer out of summer Curious, bold, rare sensation. It'll freeze your pipes. <laughs> Brain freeze.